Today is a great day in the history of the Carvers. We have settled on 969 subscribers. Nice. Unfortunately, I do not have the capability of making an entire video about the fact that I have 969 subscribers, but come on, that is beautiful, okay? Let's make sure it's still 969, right? We're not trolling. Phew, okay, we're good. But anyways, we are not here to talk about 969. We are here to talk about Vim. That's right. Hello everybody, I'm Cora, and today we are talking about Vim, which is basically a text editor that you can use directly from the terminal. Now in my other video, you saw that terminal is pretty OP at just moving files around, moving between files, copying files, whatever you want to do with files. But terminal could literally do anything you want in the whole universe, okay? And Vim is basically the key component of that because if you can't edit text files, you can't write code. But if you know how to use Vim, you can write anything directly from ther terminal? Terminal. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. And basically being able to do stuff from the terminal is really useful because once you get good enough at using terminal, you can literally do everything from the terminal. Like I started doing some software work and I literally do everything directly from the terminal. I don't need my web browser, I don't need my Visual Studio Code, I don't need anything else. Just my terminal. Now Vim is powerful in other ways as well. So I'm going to do a quick demo and then we'll get into the actual commands that I use on a daily basis. Knowing all the commands is pretty useless because you're probably going to forget them in like 5 seconds. So I'll just show you guys the ones that are really useful that once you know how to use them, you will want to use Vim over some other text editor that you're going to use. Okay, so basically for the demo, I'll show you the power of Vim. The first thing you could do is you could also edit hidden files that you can't find through your finder. So you can do vim bash profile, the dot before it means it's hidden file. And right now I already have something on this page, right? And if I want to delete a line, all I can do is click DD, and it's gone. If I was like on VS Code, I would literally have to like select it with my mouse and then click delete. Or I'd have to use my like arrow keys and then I had to move my hand to the arrow keys and then do all that stuff. It's really nasty in a normal text editor. Here, I just type DD twice and I'm good. And why don't we try an alias? Basically what an alias is, is you can make your own commands in um, Bash. So why don't we make an alias? I typed I to start typing and then alias and what else could we do? We could do Carrara and then we could set the Thing to do a command. Echo basically tells your terminal to print something out and what do we want to print? We want to print it's cool because I am cool. Bro, I use this example too much. People are going to think I actually think that. Just kidding. I do I do actually think that. Okay. Okay. And then once we're done, we literally just do escape WQ, uh, search the bash profile. Don't worry if you don't know what a bash profile is. I'm just doing this for an example. So now we could call our command Carrara and we got it's cool. Very good stuff. Epic. One more example. We go here. One of the wanted to change this command. Instead of having to select it, I just go like that, gone, echo, your mom, wq. And then source it again, and Carrara, your mom. Epic. Just to be clear before we get into the tutorial, I'm not going to be teaching you every single thing you could possibly learn in Vim because I'm just going to teach you the bare minimum to get started in coding. If you guys want to learn all the shortcuts, which I recommend you guys do because the more shortcuts you know, the faster you are in typing. But if you want to learn how to use more shortcuts, just type Vim Tutor in your terminal. Let me just show you. Just type Vim Tutor. And you get this. So you could go down the page with J and hooray. See, it teaches you exactly how to use it. It'll give you even more tips and stuff than I could possibly give. But basically what I'm trying to do is just teach you guys the bare minimum so that you guys don't have to try to memorize all the hacking shortcuts in this guide because there's so many of them and not even fun. So anyway, on to the tutorial. Okay, so now how do we use them? Let us go into a new document. So basically if you want to make a new document, you first change directory into the place you want to make it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cd into documents and then test code or test project, why not? And then we'll just do vim and then we could do any type of file we want. We can make a py file, we can make a what else? We can make a text file, we can make a, I don't know, what else, HTML file, we can make whatever the heck we want. So why don't we make a py file? Print loop.py, why not? Alright, so we opened up our print loop.py and we want to start typing something. So let's say we want to type Carrara. Question mark, I didn't type anything I typed? What the heck? This is suck you text editor. Let's go use VS Code. This sucks. Well, unfortunately, young grasshopper, you have much to learn about how Vim works. Now, the reason why you're not typing is because Vim has three modes, basically. You got your normal mode, which is right now, which is meant for putting commands into your Vim. So, from here, you can save your files, you can do stuff like that. But there's also a separate mode for typing. Now, the reason why they do that is because you want to be able to type commands. Like, in order to save a project, you got to do colon w. But what happens if you wanted to type colon w, then you have to go into a different mode in order to type it. So basically, the first command you got to know is i. So if you just type i, you enter insert mode, which is basically normal typing mode. So I could type, let's say, uh, what, what would we say, def print loop dot py, or print loop, like that. Okay, now let's say we wanted to delete this, right? So we would go here, we try backspacing, it doesn't do anything. It literally just deleted the colon. 
So basically the lesson here is don't use your mouse when you're using Vim. The whole point of Vim is so you can keep your hands on the keyboard without moving this. Okay, so we're still in insert mode, so we can still type some other stuff. Let's do that. All right, that was not bad at all. We literally did it and we didn't have any problems. But what happens if we wanted to delete something? Like, let's say we wanted to delete this line and I can't use my mouse. What the heck? This sucks. How are we going to do it? Well, basically in Vim, everything depends on where your cursor is. So we know right now that our cursor is right at the bottom of the screen. And in order to move it, we have to use some other keys. But if we try clicking other keys on the keyboard, it's still typing. So how do we exit this typing mode? Basically what we gotta do is we gotta click escape. So now we're back in the command mode, which lets us move around in our file and lets us save our file and stuff like that. So the first thing you gotta know about Vim is that to move up, it's K. To move down, your cursor, it's J. To move left, it's H. To move right, it is L. So we can move like this, we can move like that, we can move up, we can move down. You might be tempted to use the arrow keys, but do not use the arrow keys, okay? I used to use the arrow keys and I thought Vim sucked. Because if you wanna use arrow keys, you literally had to move your right hand over to the like arrow keys and it takes a long time. So the only reason why Vim is good is if you keep your fingers in the same place. So use H, A, K, and L. Do not let yourself use the arrow keys, okay? Okay, so now we can move around and like technically if you wanted to delete this line, we could go all the way to the end, then enter the typing mode and then click backspace all the way. Still, we haven't even got the last thing, so that's kind of lame. So, essentially, if we wanted to undo that, let's do U, and if we wanted to delete an entire line, the, uh, the command is DD. Okay, and now we could go to the end of this line. Bro, my cursor can't even get to the end of the line, it's so sad. So, basically, the other command you gotta know is Shift A. So, if you Shift A, it goes to the end of the line, puts you in insert mode, and now you can type. So, now we can print epicness. So basically the three things you gotta know from your command mode is I puts you in typing mode, shift A puts you at the end of the line, and DD deletes the line. And then of course you gotta remember that you can move around with your H, J, K, and L keys, but if we do that, oops I forgot again, we gotta make sure we go into the non-insert mode. Okay, epic. All you gotta do to go to non-insert mode is escape, and now you could do all your moving around, you could do your I, you could escape, whatever. Okay, so basically with those three commands you can type anything you want in Vim, like, I could write an even more complicated function when we do an if statement. So, the thing about Vim is it's really easy if you don't have to go back, right? You just have to click I and then type whatever the heck you want. But now the hardest part is just making sure your cursor gets in the right location, right? So, we know that H, A, K, and L is one way to do it. Whoops, gotta escape to get rid of insert mode. So, H, A, and K is one way to do it, right? But, like, if we want to do that, we had to go all the way, hold it, and then finally we're at the beginning of our file. While well, we're down here, well, the easy way to get your beginning of your file is just GG. So, the way I like to remember it is G is just for going places. So, GG goes to the beginning, capital G goes to the end. Very cool. And let's say we wanted to get to the end of the line, so if we could either just do L all the way to the end, or if we wanted to do it the cool way, the coolest way is to use dollar. So, dollar sends you to the end of the line. And then if we want to go back to the beginning of the line, it's zero. And that one's really easy to remember, right? Zero is for the beginning of the line, and then dollar well, dollar's not really easy to remember, but basically remember that zero and dollar are the two things on the like number place. So they go from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. All right, we wrote a file. So how do you run it? Now let's try clicking escape. Let's get out of here. Oh, what? It's not letting me get out of here. What the heck? This is not fair. So basically from command mode, the way you quit out of a file is you do colon Q. However, this Q only means that you're quitting your file. See, like right here, you can see that it's only Q right now. But I want to also save my file, right? I don't want to just quit it, then I lose all my progress. So if you want to save, you do a W as well. W stands for write. So like, if you want to write down your file, like save it, you want to put W as well. So if we do WQ, we get out here. And now, why don't we try running it? Python 3 print loop.py. Enter. Oops, Python print loop.py. Epic. All right, so we edited it once. Why don't we go back in there, Vim, and we can do the same file, and we do uh, print loop. And now let's say, like, I completely messed up, and I want to write my function in a completely different way. The one other thing that you got to know about uh, Vim is that you could select multiple things. And no, you can't select it with the mouse, because if we try to do that, we need to do backspace, it doesn't work. So basically, the third mode in Vim is called visual mode, which is basically select mode. So if you want to enter visual mode, the way I like to remember it is that visual is like you could see a selection bar. You got to click V, right? Because V for visual. So we click V and we could select. See, it selects everything from where our cursor started to where our cursor ends. And if we want to delete it, we just click X, right? Because X is like crossing it out, delete. And remember, if you want to delete a line, you just do DD. So we go up, we do shift A, we go to the end, we click enter, and now we're typing again. So that was one way to do it. 
Now, of course, that was not very convenient, right? We had to like select some random part of our thing and then delete that random part of our thing and then delete an extra line. No, that's bad. So another way to do it, let's undo that with you. Whoops, <laughs> gotta escape insert mode. You, 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 epic. So if we want to select entire lines with our visual mode, instead of just selecting a portion from where our cursor started, we click capital V and hooray, it selects a whole line. So now we can delete this whole thing and we just click X. All right, and then we go in here and we type again, blah, blah, blah. So basically, I personally like to use backspace in order to like delete stuff. So you could just do shift A and then backspace, right? But like other people, if you want to delete from the beginning of a word, you can do X, right? It just deletes to the right of your cursor. So you just do X, deletes that way. All right, so those are basically the main commands that I like to use. So of course, you got your shift A that puts you in typing mode at the end. And then you gotta know how to undo, which is you. And then you gotta know how to do I, which lets you type wherever your cursor is. Escape takes you out of that mode. Uh, DD deletes the line. K brings you up. Shift A again. Make an enter. The other one you gotta know is if you want to delete a line or select the entire thing, we could select the whole thing and click X, and we are good. And then if we want to save, we do colon W. If we want to save and quit, we do colon WQ. All right, epic. So one last thing, and then we're done. Just how to copy and paste in Vim. So. We go here, we click I, we type like def print loop, and then we can do four I in range, whoops, and we want to print, cool. So now we want to copy this, so if we know how to select it, we do capital V, oops, gotta escape insert mode, capital V, okay, we select it, and now the way to copy it is we click Y, which means yank. So we do yank, and basically to paste it, we click P. Epic, it pastes it on the next line, exactly what you copy. And now we could go down here, we click W, 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 and we get to the beginning of the word. We do CW to get rid of the word and go into typing mode. These aren't that relevant. I'm just spewing something that you, if you want to keep track of them. And then we could type not cool. And then we could select it again, Y, P, change this to like two, make this like, well, what should we make this? We could do CW, not epic. And then we go to the end, we call our function, print loop, and we are done, W, Q. And then we can do python print loop.py and we are good. We literally did everything in this tutorial purely through terminal. Now the thing about teaching Vim is the only way to learn it is to do it yourself. So what I would recommend is take a python file or something that you wrote before and then try typing it up in Vim and see what you could do. Another thing you do, just try like easy hacker rank problems through your terminal and see if you could do them. And do not use the arrow keys or your mouse. Because if you use them, it defeats the purpose of Vim. So key takeaways, first thing, you have three modes. You got your normal command mode where you can move around your uh, cursor. You have your insert mode where you can type whatever the heck you want. And then you have visual mode, which allows you to select stuff. And quick quiz, how do you go into each one? It's basically the beginning letter, right? So from command mode to insert mode, it's I. From command mode to visual mode, it's V. And then if you want to go back to command mode, you click escape. Very cool stuff. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. Now that was only a really brief overview of Vim, like what you could do just to get you guys started on typing. But you, if you guys want me to do an advanced uh, functions uh, tutorial on Vim with all the cool stuff you could do on Vim, I'll, let me know. I'll do it. But anyways, I highly suggest that you guys learn Vim. It's very, very cool. It's very, very fast to type stuff up. And there are not that many commands to learn to get started. Now the cool thing about Vim is that you could keep getting better at it. There's so many shortcuts and they all do really powerful things. So. If you guys learn Vim, you could guys could get way faster at typing. It's crazy. So anyways, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.